Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on November 17th, 2021. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Dew, giving you a full world update on our space weather, world weather, volcanoes and earthquakes. Looking at the last 48 hours on the sun, still only worrying about the coronal hole wind streams. The wind stream affecting Earth right now is still just above 500 kilometers per second. Watching that cresting northern sunspot. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming. And it is getting a little bit active. The southern one, not so much. Lots of plasma, though, associated with the southern one just behind that deep coronal hole, which is a cooled region on the sun. Looking at outgoing imagery here, still minor B-class flares, nothing major to report. There was another CME that was not Earth-directed off the backside of the sun, basically towards Mercury yet again. Another close look at that cresting sunspot. Looks like it could be activating. We'll have to see the complexity of it as it comes around. Multi-spectrum here. The last 48 hours, thanks to Solar Dynamics Observatory. These are all images that you can see yourself. All the links to these sites are in the description below of the video. This one here, 193 angstroms. You can really see those two coronal holes were already being affected by the first one, and we're getting another one that will be turning in. A couple plasma tornadoes there spinning off the surface on the left side there as well. Other than that, pretty quiet sun. Looking at Lasco 2 and 3, showing that small CME off the back side of the sun towards Mercury, who is just coming into view here on Lasco 3. That bright star just coming into view there. That is Mercury. Solar X-ray flux is in A range. It was up to B range earlier. A little flash. Geomagnetic activity remains low. Solar proton flux as well is low. Other than that, we're just being hit, hammered pretty much by the solar winds from the coronal hole wind stream that we were talking about and showing just earlier. Right now we're sitting at 533 kilometers per second, but we bumped up to about 645 kilometers per second just yesterday around this time. Things have calmed down since. But this is what it looks like on the graph. And looking at ISWA space prediction spiral, you can see another CME shut off, just missing Mars there pretty much at BEPI satellite. But there seems to be some kind of connectivity with the sun right now and Mercury. A lot of CMEs have been directed towards Mercury. So we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on when it comes back down for a Mercury, Mercury retrograde. Looking at our Schumann resonance for today. Pretty low power of amplitude 8. A quality of 17.0. Looking at earthquakes the last 24 hours around the world. This is brought to you by Walton 3D, an app you can all get and keep track of the earthquakes yourself. Or you can check out Daily Do, where we look at all the earthquakes around the world. Largest and deepest today, 5.5, 569 kilometer depth in Chile. As well, a 4.4 here reported in Ecuador. 4.9 El Salvador, 106 kilometer depth. As well, earthquakes moving northeastward from Dominican to the Virgin Islands, 3.8. Looking across the United States, rare earthquake here in Gypsum, Kansas, a 3.0 to 5 kilometer depth. As well, activity continues through Texas and Mexico border. Midland, Texas, 2.7. And as well, White City, New Mexico. And then we get to San Francisco. And earlier this morning, I saw a few earthquakes pop up there. And I thought to myself, watch out, San Fran. And we did see... San Roman, California, a 3.9 earthquake. And another 3.0 followed, 2.6, 2.8. USGS is reporting many more than this app is right now. Northward into Idaho here, Leodore, 2.7 and a 2.6. Stanley, Idaho, 
USGS here just overlooking. The only swarm that I'm really worried about is the geysers north of San Francisco. And this little swarm that's been happening today that's about 15 earthquakes in the region. San Ramon, California. And zooming in here on satellite imagery, you can see there's a subdivision here right beside a little golf, co golf course. Definitely felt that earthquake, these earthquakes today, I'm sure, throughout the area. Let me know if you're watching from this area, possibly, if you felt these earthquakes today. 3.9 was a pretty sizable earthquake for San Francisco. Heads up and have a plan, everybody. As well notable here, the geysers. So these were the two areas that I was watching throughout the day today as they were bubbling up. Alaska quieting down a bit today. As well, Hawaii only seeing 2.6s. Nothing major to report there. Another quick look at the last 48 hours. Or the last 24 hours overlooking the Kilauea Summit Crater. Still amazing images coming out of there. We'll carry on here through Fiji. Hi Hi Fo Tonga 4.6 and as well Fiji Islands 4.9 520 kilometer depth so really deep earthquake here really deep earthquake South America we really have to watch out for Central America 4.9 here Solomon Islands Kokopo Papua New Guinea as well a 5.3 4.9 here just north of Krakatoa and as well 4.9 here Yilan Taiwan and right along the shoreline of China here, Dazong, China, 5.0. I'm sure a lot of people felt that one as well. Carrying on here up into the India and Eurasia plate. Afghanistan, 4.2, 200 kilometer depth. And as well a 4.2 just south of that. 4.8 here in Turkey. And a rare earthquake here right off the coast of Italy. Isol, a trimidity, 4.1 just east of Italy. Having a quick look here, the last seven days, still watching a lot of deep earthquakes the last few days and not really getting that large reverberation as we would expect the large shallow earthquakes to follow. So heads up, stay aware and prepared and just have a plan, everybody. Get your bug out bag. And if you don't know what I mean, look in the description below, get a backpack, get your necessities into a backpack have it by a door, ready to go. This is not a fear-mongering channel. It's about being aware and prepared. And that's the last seven days for earthquakes. Let's have a quick look at all of the erupting volcanoes brought to you by the Pacific Disaster Center. Most recent updates here, Reventador in Ecuador, Katmai in the United States. That's right, Katmai is right in the middle of Anchorage and... Semis Napochnoi, Pavlov is erupting around there as well, Karamiski to the west, but Katmai has now erupted as well, awakened yet again, and it did it about two months ago, a couple poofs of steam running through here, La Palma still going active, lava streams coming from that volcano today as well, Fuego, Nevadas de Ruiz, Nevadas de Chilean, Swiss de Najima, Ibu, Indonesia, Semis Napochnoi. We've got a landslide here to report in Nepal. Landslides across BC. Atmospheric rivers stretching across both oceans right now. And if you want to stay aware and prepare, just like to do, Pacific Disaster Center, this is a great app to have showing you all the disasters from around the world, from thunderstorms to snowstorms, floods and landslides. Mount Vernon, Washington, OMAC, Washington, flood warnings. Flood warnings throughout British Columbia. They cl declared a state of emergency today as five major highways are cut off. Literally all imports and exports are cut off from Vancouver eastward. So thoughts and prayers and a speedy recovery and rebuild of very important infrastructure which we've been, I've been warning about for a long time. These, our infrastructure is outdated and we shouldn't be building highways along rivers. 
unless we're ready to get some boats ready. So here we are, the five-day forecast brought to you by Media Worth and as well daily events worldwide. We're going to start out here, home base, Ontario, where, yeah, it jumped up to almost 15 degrees today ahead of this low-pressure system right here. We've got another one coming through later in the week, but it's not going to be so warm. Backside winds here, we're going to be looking at minus double digits across the border. Wisconsin, Montana. But then just ahead of that, it's warm. After that, low pressure system, it will be cold. So mostly scattered showers over the next couple days as that system moves through. Westward, looking at a pretty deepening devastating situation developing here another low heading into the bc mountains a lot of snowpack already and we're not even in winter yet so these atmospheric rivers of moisture that are hammering bc and as well washington this is all going to come together and right out through vancouver so heads up british columbians prayers going out to all of you we need that we need those highways open back up there are even train lines down. CN and as well Canadian Pacific are not operating from east to west through Vancouver. So state of emergency, emergency declared British Columbia. And look at these systems building in the long range forecast over the Pacific Ocean. This is kind of insane, guys. Again, these apps, I, I tell you, this is the best weather forecast app that I've seen to date. That's why I keep using it. But this one particularly, it's about to get really hectic in the Pacific Ocean the next five days. Look at these systems, middle of the Pacific, deepening troughs and massive amounts of moisture heading towards the Koreas. Same thing happening in the Atlantic right now. The atmospheric rivers, these are driving low pressure systems to a deepening low. Big low pressure system heading towards Eastern Europe as well. Watch for cold conditions. Minus double digits coming through as another system comes from Greenland heading towards Finland. And again, cold temperatures still deepening and stretching to the 40th parallel. Upper Mongolia, Nepal Valley, China and North Korea is definitely going to have an extreme weather event on their hands over the next few days. Daily evaporation rains through Indonesia. Low pressure systems moving out of India this week. We're going to be watching this big one here forming through the Indian Ocean. Tracking that towards Madagascar in the long range. Overlooking Australia in the next five days. Things are going to be heating up parts of northern territories. But watch for that very intense low pressure system to go through parts of southeastern Australia backed by some really warm temperatures so you could see some large amounts of torrential downpours hail daily evaporation rain through Hawaii this week and again this is the big story this week guys the atmospheric river the very large low pressure systems through the Pacific state of emergency declared British Columbia. Please share this with your friends and family from around the world as we stay aware and prepared to these coming dramatic changes. Stay aware and prepared, stay young and have fun and get your morning due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.